Hello everyone, it's Spawnpoint, and today I'm going to show you the difference between a $1,000 gaming monitor and one that literally costs just $150, and this actually looks incredible. Now they both work on the PS5, Xbox Series X and PC, and will give us at least 120Hz at 1440p. So what's the catch? Well, I wanted to see if you need to spend big money on a monitor, or if you can still get a great gaming experience spending a lot less. So whether you've got money burning a hole in your pocket, or you want something super cheap for your setup, hopefully today's video will show you what you can get for your money. Any questions you have, just drop them below and I will try to answer those for you. So to keep it as fair as possible, I wanted the specs to be pretty similar in what they could offer. Obviously it wouldn't be identical at this price point, but close enough. So we've got the LG 27GR95QE, a 27 inch OLED which I've personally been using for about the last 8 months. And the Kuroi, I think that's how it's pronounced, the 27E1QA, which is also a 27 inch screen but it is a VA LCD panel. So both are 27 inches, support 1440p and 144Hz. In fact, the LG does go up to 240Hz if you're on PC. Right, let's start with the picture quality. So the fact that the LG is an OLED screen means we're getting those self-lighting pixels, perfect contrast and black levels, as well as zero light bleed. This means playing any game during the day or at night will look almost perfect. Not to mention the clarity and motion handling on this is awesome. You've only got to look at some of these clips to see how impressive OLED is. It's worth mentioning that both of these screens are 1440p, and at this size there really is not a need to go for 4K. Now the Kuroi is a VA LCD, which means although we're not going to get the perfect black levels like we see on an OLED, the black levels and contrast are pretty decent, and typically better than what we'd find on an IPS panel. Viewing it straight on, you can see how good the contrast looks, and surprisingly, these colours look great. It's really only when going off centre do you notice the colours start to look a little washed out. Now that is a trait of a VA panel, but watching it straight on as you would normally do, the colours and contrast and black levels are really good. Now it does suffer a little from being too dark in some areas like in the shadows, but tweaking the brightness and the dark field effect in the settings does help sort that out. And the LG by comparison will let us view the image from almost any angle as we don't lose any contrast or image quality. Colour and colour accuracy is another point worth mentioning. So they both have a DCI P3 colour gamut rating, and the LG is 98.5%, while the Kuroi is just 90%. Now as for the brightness, well both of these are actually surprising. The LG with the latest update reaches around 200 nits in SDR and around 6 to 700 in HDR, while the Kuroi is 300 nits SDR and does not support HDR at all. So technically, it's actually brighter in SDR which is really noticeable when you have the two screens side by side. The budget monitor looks really good here and makes the LG look incredibly dim. So if you were playing only in SDR or games that didn't support HDR, the budget monitor actually wins hands down. To make this comparison, I'm using an HDMI splitter which does support HDMI 2.0 and HDR, but as the monitor doesn't support HDR, they are both running at SDR instead. But when you jump onto the LG with HDR enabled, this boosts the brightness by nearly double that of the Kuroi, and it is really noticeable. Now what about the speed and the response of these two monitors? Well, believe it or not, they both have a crazy fast response time. Starting with the Kuroi, this has a rated response time of just 1 milliseconds. This is the time it takes for a pixel to go from grey to grey, which is an important measurement used for seeing how fast and responsive a monitor is, while the LG has a response time of just 0.03 milliseconds. To be honest, anything close to or under 1 millisecond is fast enough, so the Kuroi is doing a great job here, and the LG, well that's just flexing. Input lag, on the other hand, varies depending on the resolution and the frame rate that you're running at. The LG can hit anywhere from 2.9 milliseconds up to 9.5 milliseconds when using either 240Hz or 60Hz, but at 120Hz you'll see around 5.2 milliseconds. But the fact they are both capable of 120Hz, it means playing games like Warzone or Apex will be perfect on here. The Kuroi varies between 3 milliseconds and 16 milliseconds, and from the gaming that I've played on here over the last week, this monitor is fast enough at 120Hz. At no point have I felt like this monitor is holding me back or feels slow in any way. That's included Warzone and Call of Duty, where I normally play on the LG, so swapping over to the Kuroi hasn't really made any difference to my gameplay. They both support FreeSync and the LG supports G-Sync as well, so we are able to get that fluid, tear-free gaming experience. The LG also supports a VRR while the Kuroi doesn't. That's because the LG does come with HDMI 2.1 ports, and that allows the full 1440p, 120Hz and VRR that we of course need on the PS5. What's also interesting is the LG can accept a 4K input even though it's a 1440p screen. It will then downscale that to 1440p, whereas the Kuroi will only accept a 1440p signal. 
Now, one thing I really wanted to test out was the ghosting, and I kind of expected it to be terrible on such a budget screen, but from my testing and use, I really have not noticed it at all. I'm not saying it's not there, because of course I'm running this at 120Hz and not 144, but from the general gaming that I've done, I really have not noticed it. I then plugged in the Xbox to see what features the monitor lacks, and it's clear that other than 1440p at 120Hz and 60Hz, it doesn't do anything else. No HDR, Dolby Vision, or 4K, but we knew all of that already and wouldn't expect it at this price. Now, one of the reasons I picked up this monitor is because it's cheap. It ticks all of the boxes for a fair comparison, and it's got a lot of positive reviews on Amazon. But there was one comment I saw mentioned quite a few times, and that's about it not being able to run 1440p at 120Hz via HDMI. Well, I can say this monitor does work at 1440p and 120Hz on the PS5 as well as the Xbox Series X. You can also see the resolution by pressing the menu button on the monitor and it confirms what we're getting. The same on the Xbox, if you select the 1440p and the 120Hz setting, it works and it stays that way. So what's crazy is we're getting a monitor that supports both of these for just $150. Now there are two HDMI ports on this and the website suggests that one is HDMI 2.0 and the other is HDMI 1.4. I've gone ahead and plugged the PS5 into both ports and ran the same tests, but I'm getting the same results. So either the website is wrong or they have recently updated the monitors to two HDMI 2.0 ports and forgot to tell anyone. For reference, here's the serial number of mine, just in case it helps somebody else out in the future when looking for a new monitor. Now, although the Kuroi is impressive for gaming, the LG is on a whole different level. It just looks absolutely incredible. Even though it's still 1440p, it's a lot cleaner and has far more clarity, without looking over sharpened. It also has VRR, so games will naturally run a lot smoother as it adapts to the frame rate. And the fact that both the PlayStation 5 and the Xbox Series X do support VRR is probably something that you would want from a monitor. As for the design, well, first impressions are everything. The LG, as you would expect, feels premium. It's heavy, solid, and has these practically borderless bezels. The overall profile is also really thin, but that's also with thanks to the OLED panel that it is using. The overall design on the back is nice too, with the LED strips built in. Then we have a button underneath it that feels firm and responsive, but it also comes with a remote control to access the menus. The Kuroi, on the other hand, feels like it's made from cheap plastic, and feels a lot lighter when moving it around. And due to the fact that it's an LCD, it's nowhere near as thin as the LG. But it does have some awesome thin bezels around the edge of the screen. In fact, these are thinner than some monitors that cost two to three times this. Now the LG has quite a striking rear design with the hexagon LEDs in the middle, but you know what? The budget monitor looks alright too. It's minimal and clean and doesn't look tacky at all. The buttons across the bottom are flimsy and are quite fiddly to press to access the menu, but obviously at this price point you're not going to be using premium materials, and let's be honest, once you've set it up you're not really going to care what it's made from. As for the provided stands, well, the LG offers a one-click solution that simply slots into the back of the monitor, and it gives you full control over how you want to use it. So not only does it move up and down, but it also pivots, tilts, and swivels left to right. This means we can adjust the monitor without having to physically move the feet. It's also sturdy and has little to no wobble. The Kuroi also comes with a stand, and on first impressions, it looks very similar to the LG. It's got a one-click system that attaches to the back of the monitor, but as far as stands go, it is very limited. You can tilt it, but there's no height adjustment or swivel function at all. Personally, I would always use a monitor arm for your desk anyway, as it will give you far more movement and control over how you use it. Plus, it looks nicer and frees up some space. This one is the Magnus arm, which I have linked to below, and it is compatible with both monitors, as they are VESA mountable. As for the menus and controls, they both offer similar basic settings and customization, but the way they are displayed and delivered are completely different. Firstly, the LG comes with a remote control to access the settings. You can use the joystick button underneath, but the remote is far easier, and LG offers some of the best menus out there for both their monitors and their TVs. So this game optimizer mode shows you some of your stats including whether VRR and HDR is on, the frame rate, and swapping between different picture profiles. It's certainly a nice user-friendly experience. Then there's the full menu which you get full control over the picture settings, performance mode, and loads more. You can even change the color of the LEDs on the rear. Now the Kuroi does come with some great options too, including various picture settings, such as FPS and RTS modes. I actually use the standard mode and I've dropped the dark filled bright effect to minus 5, and for me this is the best picture quality I can get out of this, and has improved the overall contrast. Now it's worth talking about the viewing angles and the reflections on these. So they are both matte rather than glossy, so reflection handling is decent. Like with any screen with a matte finish, you're going to get some glare if you place it near a window or a light. And I wouldn't say either of these handle reflections or glare any worse or better than each other, which is saying something for the budget screen. 
but view and angles are totally different. The LG, with it being OLED, is far easier and nicer to view from the side as the contrast and colours are not compromised at all, whereas the Kuroi begins to wash out as you move off centre. Viewing it straight on though is absolutely fine and is really impressive, and I can't really see many people watching their monitors from the side like this. I also wanted to test out the display port and use it for productivity, so I've hooked up my MacBook Pro using one of these USB-C to display port cables. Overall, the OLED looks great. It's smooth and does register the monitor as accepting the full frame rate and resolution. Now, with it being an OLED, there's always the worry of burning, but with the inbuilt OLED care settings, it's really not of concern. Text is sharp, although there is some slight fringing which would make it very hard for using it on a daily basis. Then there's the Kuroi, which actually looks really good as a productivity monitor. It's bright, scrolling through text is smooth, and looking really closely, the fringing is better on this than on the OLED. And of course, viewing it straight on again, the colours and vibrancy is really impressive. And if you wondered what you got inside the box of both of these screens, well the LG comes with a two-part stand, an HDMI 2.1 cable, a USB cable and a DisplayPort cable, as well as a power pack, a remote control and of course the manuals. The Kuroi comes with a pair of feet and the stand, a power cable, a DisplayPort cable but no HDMI cable and a manual with some screws to attach it to the stand. And that's everything that we get inside the box. So here are my final thoughts on these two monitors. For $1,000, you are getting one of the best gaming monitors out there right now. Incredible picture quality, view and angles and response time, great build quality, LEDs on the rear, and it looks nice. It's hard to beat this at the top end of the scale. And this is my daily monitor, and even with all the others that I've tested, I keep coming back to it. But if you're on a budget for $150, you cannot go wrong with this monitor. Sure, we've got limited view and angles, washed out colours when compared to an OLED or an IPS, but it's literally one of, if not the cheapest, 27-inch gaming monitor that offers these specs. It's one I would happily recommend to friends and family if they needed a budget setup. So if you do want one of the cheapest gaming monitors out there that's a 27 inch, supports 1440p at 120Hz on the PS5, you will be happy with this. But if you can up your budget to about $250, you will have far more choice and will get a lot better monitor overall. Now drop a cheap gaming monitor in the comments and I will give you a thumbs up by staying right till the end. And if you did enjoy today's video, check out my desk tour video next, as it covers everything that I use in my setup. Thanks for watching, please like, sub and follow me everywhere. Until next time.